Remakes. Yeah. What can we say about them other than the fact that they are a thing? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a special edition of The Game Changer. I am indeed Nate the Effing Great, and I'm being joined here by the one and only charismatic enigma herself, Charisma. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> well, that's one way to make an entrance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's one way. Yeah, and we are being joined here by some very special guests. One of them, of course, being a good friend of ours, the one and only Mr. Agent Cooper. How's it going, good sir? Spoiler alert: This movie sucks. I, <laughs> I don't even know what movie we're talking about. This movie? Predator. It sucks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> fair. Fair enough. Our and every so and every now and then, occasional comments oh. that apparently need to be filtered by Agent Cooper, Mr. Grant. All right. <laughs> that's that's me. That's my name. What he meant to say is, hello, please defer all praise to my lord and savior, Agent Cooper. <laughs> Follow him in Agent Cooper. And besides, <laughs> you pronounced his name wrong. It's Gernt. Gernt? There's no A. Gernt. It's Gernt. It's Gernt. Gernt. It's Gernt. Gernt. We're calling right. him Gernt I, because I Gernt is his slave that. name. Alternatively, you may refer to me as Emperor Yetus Letus. Yetus Letus. So you've been demoted from slave to whipping boy. <laughs> no, I've been promoted <laughs> to Emperor. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it is 2018. You have to remember that we did have the third installment of Fifty Shades this year, so... I watched all Get three of those movies. Get on with the fucking podcast. <laughs> They're terrible. You know what? That's for like another time. Yes. So, obviously, alert, the predator sucks. Man, you said that twice already. I, I know, but I, I just felt the need to reiterate. I'm, I'm just going to pour that soup right on your head. My, and it's my delicious, delicious egg drop soup. You know what the difference between this this egg drop soup and the movie is? This oh, please! Egg drop soup doesn't suck. Oh boy, he's forced my hand. Okay, so we're going to be talking about remakes today, but I thought that we should actually start this podcast with a little bit of something fun. Uh, only charisma knows about this. I thought it'd be actually kind of mm. funny to do for our good friend, Mr. Agent Cooper himself. I'm going to actually pass this along to everybody so that way they get a chance to, you know, What's have happening? some fun with this. Uh, so, I don't know if you've heard of anti-jokes. <laughs> I think, I have a feeling you said something else, but all I heard was puns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what's wrong? You don't like puns? I'm pretty sure you meant to say puns, but I heard the death of all my hopes and dreams and that you hate me and want unspeakable things to happen to my future children. It's okay. Not everybody can take a lot of punishment. <laughs> uh, Please, Mr. Been... Cooper, kill me with a rusty shovel. Okay, Gert, we can do. We can make this happen. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. So, we got a couple of anti-jokes that are right here, and I thought, you know what? Don't do this to me. Those are, those are puns. I'm going to hit you. <laughs> they are actually... Uh, well, we'll see. All right. So, like, like I said, I'm just going to be passing around a couple of these, and we're just going to keep doing this until Mr. Agent Cooper decides to, you know, stop making so many jokes about the Predator, because, yes, we know it was not exactly up to par, but if you keep saying it, then we're going to keep doing this, and it might even go for a full hour, which... You know like that's a not very... hooker in a vacuum factory. Uh, here we go. It sucked. <laughs> All right. So, when William joined the army, he disliked the phrase "fire at will." Yeah. This is yep. This is the death of all my hopes and dreams, right here. <laughs> this, 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 this is how it ends. Just pick one out, charisma. Whichever one you want. What do you call a fish with no eyes? 
was the best. Uh, okay, Gurnt, what do you got for us? I couldn't quite remember how to throw a boomerang, but eventually it came back to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, man. I usually take steps to avoid elevators. <laughs> Just the reaction. <laughs> oh my gosh, this might be the fit. My no one knew she had a dental implant until it came out in conversation. Oh, I love that one. That's a good one. <laughs> oh, are we having fun yet? I am. <laughs> I like to think I'm a pretty punny person. <laughs> Do you have one, Gurnton? A duck walks into a bar. Animal control is probably called when the duck is released in a nearby park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, th- okay this, one I- this one might be a little bit far, but I like it. Why could Jimmy not drive a tractor? Because he had no arms or legs. Why? Because he is a potato. Yeah. <laughs> Just the amount of weeks you're putting in. It's amazing. I was struggling to figure out how lightning works when it struck me. <laughs> okay, Gert, one more, one more. Make it count. <laughs> No, I had I had one that wasn't on this list, and I remember. Oh, uh, oh! Did you have one off the top of your head? Oh, that I makes it even better. Okay, I uh, know. Here, here it is. Here it is. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, three men walk into a bar. You'd think the third one would have ducked. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. That's how many different ways I thought of killing you <laughs> while you were doing that. I got up to thirty-seven. Last one involved a fishing lure and a spoon. <laughs> that sounds neat and creative. That's, that does it sound is. Pretty you could do a DIY on that. It's not neat. It's very messy. Well, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. I will literally <laughs> eat your fish. <laughs> All right. I think we had enough fun here. But you know what? It's only going to get better because remember, remember, AJ Cooper, you're going to be on our show next month when we do our Halloween-themed. Halloween! So... Yeah. Okay, it's right up your alley. It will be, and I will make sure to bring the ritual sack. <laughs> Don't forget the bowling ball, because it's going to be right up your alley. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally getting out of the right now. He just no, he's the, he's there's, done. there's your no. title card. The end of Game Changer. <laughs> no, 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 just the end of Agent Cooper, really. <laughs> Is this the end of Agent Cooper? That's Will the game changer continue on? No, yes. <laughs> no, yes. It will take more than punnery to beat me. What about a play on words? Well, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. This might be my favorite cooperative podcast I've done in quite some time. God damn it. I just thought of one, too. <laughs> Please, oh. indulge us. Oh, it's it's uh, from an online show that at least Kari and I watch. Uh, some of our viewers might be familiar with a, uh, a group on YouTube called Team Four Star. Team Four Star! There's a, a, a scene in um, a show they do where a character who is a robot, essentially, um, has most of his body destroyed. He's literally just down to his head, and he's giving this speech to another character and he makes a wisecrack about um, during the speech towards another character, and the character said, and the character he made the crack about says, "Why don't you come up here and say that to my face?" And the robot says, "I am literally ahead." Well, maybe you should quit while you are. And I'm like, that is the clever. Like they've been doing that show for t- a decade now, and I feel like all the comedy in it built up to that because even I can't hate that. That shit's just clever. <laughs> it is. Maybe you should quit while you're ahead. I I literally am. Oh, man. So, like I said at the top of the show, we're going to be talking about remakes. More specifically, those that should not have seen the light of day and should not see the light of day. Because we actually went through a list of a lot of remakes that are either being planned out or in the process of possibly being worked on. And, uh, you yeah, know, let's just say Some of that, us aren't happy. Let's just say that there's a dark cloud in this restaurant that we're in right now. Just from all of the ideas that are going on here. But let's actually start with some of the remakes that should not have been made. We'll make this like a little bit easier because we can talk about those that shouldn't be made 
Oh, I, I've already got my first one. All right. Well, I mean, if you want it, if you want fire. Now, are these ones that are going to that for sure are going to happen, or no. ones that we just don't want to ever see happen? Well, the, we're first starting with the ones that have already happened. Okay. So, so like, so like ones that you basically are just like, why do they need to remake an awesome movie into a piece of crap? Because okay. actually, I'm going to start with Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah, yeah. Fox TV show version is pretty bad. Like, I like Laverne Cox. She's a great actress. I but also love Laverne Cox. But she is a great actress. No amount of good acting is going to save that. She well, had to water it down so much for TV. Not only did they have to water it down so much for TV, but I don't think that they understand what a transvestite is because that's what Dr. Frankenfurter Doc Fra- Frank- 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 was. You are correct. He was not a transgendered person. Transgendered person is completely different than a transvestite. <laughs> And I think the transgender community should be a little more upset with that. But oh, I guess well, it's just me. I mean, a lot of people. A lot of people actually were. A lot of people. A lot of people said, you know, they weren't going to watch it because of that. I didn't watch it personally just because, like, well, I saw the trailers and just kind of went. I like you, Laverne Cox. I like Rocky Horror. But no. <laughs> There's also the fact that miss me with that shit. <laughs> they also literally had to. I don't know. Have their. Apparently, we needed a studio audience that's sitting and watching the movie and doing all the things that you would do if you were actually watching the movie in a double feature. And which, to me, I'm just that kind takes of you out of it. Having that little at the bottom, they had a little thing where there's this these people watching it basically and doing all of you know they've got the kazoo, they've do got I the scream? noise when makers. When do I fire my squirt gun? Yeah, it. It's dumb. It sounds terrible. It was terrible. Like the worst thing ever. I mean, I know that they try to do like live adaptations, and they also try to do you know There's stage performances on TV. I mean, they did that with the Sound of Music recently. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, is this this wasn't this wasn't even that. It was they were trying to show you that there was an audience who was doing the things that you're used to seeing done at the double feature double midnight feature shows. midnight shows, and you're just like. Why? We didn't need this. Yeah, most people who are going to know what that is are just going to It being live action doesn't necessarily bother me. When I got to first see it with a group of people where we got to do all the fun stuff, there was literally a stage production of people who were dressed up as the characters, Mm -hmm. who, along with the movie, did the actual actions and things, Mm -hmm. came down and talked with the audience. It was great. I'm not saying they couldn't that I have a problem with that aspect of it. It's the fact that you had to make it I don't know, it just felt like it was they were trying first off way too hard. They were also remaking a movie that should never be on TV anyway because you're going to have to cut out so much of it. So, what what's the point? I don't know. I Wish I had the perfect answer, but I really don't. Uh, well, and I don't expect you to. I just, I just don't get it. Yeah, no, I'm with you on this one. So I'll start off with one that might actually surprise people, and it actually comes from Disney. One that I did not think really need to be remade, honestly, was the live action Cinderella. I I agree. It's, so okay, obviously a lot of people know the classic tale that Disney did a while ago, and some people are. Of course, saying that you know the live action one is better because the visual effects were great. They add more storyline to characters and blah, blah blah. Here's the problem, though. The problem is with the live action one. They just, I definitely do feel like they definitely watered down Cinderella badly. They did not. They made they made her too like you know. What's what's the phrase I'm looking for? Too too holy, I guess. Where mm-hmm. I understand that you know, her dad wanted. Her to you know basically be kind to her family and just you know never leave the house and blah 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 blah. You know obviously we don't see that in the animation deal. It's just kind of one of those things where it's kind of just in her good nature. It's not one of those things where she's being forced to mm-hmm. stick around. Uh, I hated the fact that they took out all the songs because that's what made the original Cinderella that much amazing. And one thing that really ticked me off was of course how they portrayed the fairy godmother because apparently Cinderella she had to do an act of random kindness to her even though she literally just went through okay that's another thing is that she, in the, at least in the 
at the animated one. She bitch, you gotta to. earn it. <laughs> it's literally, it's literally like that, where she basically was already earning it by being a kind person in the animated one. And then she just went through basically her own hell by having her dress being torn up and like that. Locked in a room. And then she still had to show kindness to actually get that extra. Where, whereas in the animated, whereas in the animated one, the, the she character, already, she already did it. Well, she already knew. By the way. If you want a good live-action Cinderella ma- movie that was also made by Disney long before this one, it's Cinderella with Brandy in it. Thank you very much, Brandy and Miss Whitney Houston. Mm-hmm. It was amazing. I have another version, actually. Oh. And it has great music in it. Yeah. I have another version, although it's not a movie, it's a book. Um, a version of Cinderella. Well, oh, okay, um, two versions. Um, one version is... a. Uh, series of four books, um, it's kind of like a science fiction take on it set in the future called, and the first book is called Cinder, and the other one, it, uh, huh? No, it's just called Cinder. No, the next Uh, one is called, the first book is called Cinder, and then Scarlet Crest Winter. Oh, okay, I was, I uh, just thought there was a pattern there was like Cinderella. No, well, like, the idea is that Cinder, Cinderella. Scarlet is Little Red Riding Hood, uh, Cress is Rapunzel, and Winter is Snow White. Oh. Like it's basically like sci-fi, science fiction grounded in reality, non-magical reinterpretations of it. Fairy tales, right? right. Mm-hmm. But the the other version I would go with, and I know there's a movie based on this version. I have not seen the movie. I've only read the book. But it was one where if it weren't for the title, I would have never known it was a Cinderella story until the very end. And it's a book called Ella Enchanted. I love Ella Enchanted so much. I've never seen the movie. I've only. It's read actually it. really good. I quite enjoyed it. I it think um, you could, first off, uh, I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix. Mm-hmm. That's where I recently rewatched it. Here I am again plugging Netflix. I'm sorry. <laughs> hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag could be sponsored. We're gonna get sued. But Anne Hathaway did a great job. Anne Hathaway plays Ella. She does. You know, I can kind of see that. I mean, make would make her a little older than she was because she's like fourteen well, yeah. in the park, But like, that's not a big deal. But you know, some they always they change ages oh, yeah. anyway. Like, and how long ago did that movie come out? Oh, two thousand uh, mid two thousand. Oh, so yeah, back before the Stranger Things uh, series introduced us to the concept of good child acting. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. No, but like, uh, Ella Enchanted is really cool. Like, the character is kind of like under this curse thing where she has to obey people. And, like, that's how the evil, like, step family, like, takes control of her and stuff. And there's all this other... It's... It never feels like the story of Cinderella until, like, the very end. Unless, you know, it, it's fucking called Ella Enchanted, if you can't figure it out from that. <laughs> well, it's news to me, man. So, well, now the, you know. <laughs> the more you know. G.I. Joe. <laughs> that was always the running joke with me and, and Agent Cooper throughout the day. Even in the theater, we just... Harmonize that, <laughs> and it was so stupid. But you know, <laughs> all right. So I think we are back in your cart with a possible live act, uh, remake that was made but shouldn't have been. You think of any on the top of your head? Otherwise, I got another one. Uh, you go for it. Give okay. me a minute. So this is one that got high praise, and it definitely on Rotten Tomatoes was one that a lot of people were just like, "Oh man, it's a really good movie. It's a great adaptation." They did a really good job with it, but I didn't like it. I honestly did not like the new version of Pete's Dragon. I didn't. I'm sorry. Go I, home. It's go home. Go I home, actually go home. haven't seen it, so I, I oh, actually don't have anything to say. The opposite of Nate. I fucking love that movie. It's really good. Nate is wrong. Don't listen to, don't listen to him on I'm, his own show. Hey, listen I'm, to me. I'm sorry, but when it comes down to it, I remember the original. I fell in love with, you know, the original Elliot, who was, you know, of course, animated, but it was still kind of cool to see him. I mean, like technically the new one's animated. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. But it just did not have that same feel like with the original. And ag- again, children. again, it's another one of those movies where it just, it really just did it not have happen. any of the songs. It didn't have, like, the same characters. It, it was hard for me to really get into it. I really found the kid to be kind of annoying every um, now and then. I can get that, I guess. I, like I said, I, I enjoyed it. I like it a lot. Yeah, like I said, if the, if I was kind of waiting for the song to kind of take off, be like, okay, there at least has to be some familiarity with this mm-hmm. star, story. It's like, no, it's a lot different than the original one. I, honest to God, love mo- the songs like you know, uh, 
uh, what is there? Uh, Brazzle Dazzle Day was a really good song from that movie. Uh, Every Little Piece is by far probably my favorite song in that entire movie, mm-hmm. just because the the Doctor and his Hendrick, oh, they play off each other so well. And I just... Mm-hmm. You want to hear everybody in the room hate me? What's up? I've never seen the original Peach Dragon either. Really? See, here's the part where I get Nate to hate me, because as much as I love the remake, I that's how much I don't like the original, so... I'm more upset I've, with you for not having seen the remake. How dare! <laughs> I, I honestly have never seen either. It's really I, weird. I will shake my fist. <laughs> I will shake, I got shake your fist in, in, in impotent rage. So, yeah, it was just one of those things where it's hard for me to get into something that doesn't have that same feel. Like with Beauty and the Beast, it's a great movie because you have the instinct songs, you had a lot of familiar characters, but when you take a lot of that away, it just it kind of takes away from me. And even as, like, you know, a critic, it's hard for me to think, yeah, this is a really good movie. It's like, I grew up with this. I know what I want. This was not exactly what I wanted in the Pete's Dragon remake movie. Now, this is, of course, just a subjective thing. I know people are going to hate me. I know already one person hates me because of the fact that I said... <laughs> Die in a fire. <laughs> Die in a fire. You're okay. so pleasant. Oh, okay, I know, okay. right? Okay, Keegan-Michael Key, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> For those, that, well, the only people in this room are the ones that are going to get the reference. If you haven't seen the Predator, you'll understand. Mm. <laughs> Spoiler so, warning: the Predator sucks. Yeah, well, do I need to bring out another anti joke here? We I could do swear it. To God, I'll, I, mm, I'll hit you with one of the dragons maybe, that's on the wall. Maybe for the last five minutes, we'll bring out some more. But um, yeah, I think the only other live action adaptation I did not like, and I think I'm. I can think of at least. I can think of one. Uh, oh, please, by all means. Okay, so I'm actually a weird person who usually... I'm actually kind of on board with Wait, most you're a weird person? I did not know that. <laughs> I'm usually on board with most remakes. Because I've actually seen a lot of remakes that I really, really enjoy. But when I... There are, there's a couple that... I don't even necessarily think they're bad movies sometimes. But I just absolutely hate them. And probably the one that just boils my blood, like... N- not the most. It's not. It's not the worst one. <laughs> but like, it's 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 kind of up there. Is I can I hate the friggin' J.J. Abrams Star Trek movies so much. Really? Like, I'm I, not a fan. There are parts that I'm I'm okay with. I, I mean, I, the acting is pretty much universally to be really good. But there's so much. Like when I say stuff feels dumbed down, I don't just mean like the science side of it. I mean like little stuff like. Dr. McCoy is called, has the nickname Bones. In the old show, they called him Bones because Sawbones was an old nickname for a doctor. Here, they had to throw in this line about how he's, you know, a divorcee, and, you know, after his wife left him, all he's got left is his bones. And I'm just like, why does this feel like the dumber version? Because <laughs> and, it is. And, and, like, all the friggin', like, lens flares everywhere, the iPod design. I mean, I'll admit, the third one, Star Trek Beyond, was actually pretty good. Decent villain, decent story. Like, it actually felt more like Star Trek, but... God, those first, like, the worst one is probably the second one, and that one's basically a remake of Wrath of Khan, except it's the worst remake of Wrath of Khan, <laughs> even worse than Nemesis, which also was essentially a remake of Wrath of Khan. Stop remaking Wrath, Wrath of, of Khan. Khan! We get it. <laughs> we get it! It's the one that everyone likes the most! I like the third one the most! <laughs> remake! Don't remake the third one. Don't well, the, don't remake Search for Spock. I'll kill your family. <laughs> Every time, uh, everybody wants the Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan, wants the Wrath of Khan, Khan. But it's like, you do... Wrath of Khan was about destroying the romanticism of Star Trek and yes, Captain Kirk. That was the you. entire point of the movie. Thank you, know? you. And none of the other adaptations seem to get that. It's like, because yeah. You, were you forgetting about the fact that Captain Kirk has like a 20-year-old son in Wrath of Khan that he never knew about? And how this guy who he screwed over like many years ago comes back and tries to kill him. This is about how Captain Kirk is an asshole. That's what the whole because Captain about. Kirk is an asshole. Yeah. Come on, yeah. and I think everybody forgets that. Oh God, he general. super is. But like, he's a dick. And then into darkness, it doesn't what do that. Dick? <laughs> into darkness doesn't. Into darkness isn't about how you know. Um, Oh, Captain Kirk is an asshole. It's about how Khan is somehow... A space asshole. A spassel. I don't know how... It's weird. Khan is a good guy until Kirk shoots him in the back, and then he's evil. And I'm like, no, Kirk... I'm sorry. 
the way Into Darkness progresses, Khan is helpful, helpful, helpful. Oh, but then, but then Leonard Nimoy tells Kirk, uh, actually, he was evil in my timeline because <laughs> yeah, because be Kirk screwed now. him over. <laughs> I think. I think the only, like, single thing in any of them that ticks me off more than just the entirety of Wrath of Bullshit, I mean Into Darkness, is probably the bit in the first one where they're like, oh, it's the Kobayashi Maru. It's a t- the point of the test is to experience fear. They know it's a simulation. They know it's a test. They know there's no consequences for failure. This is literally the dumbest thing. <laughs> I hate you. Go sit in the corner until you can make a better Star Trek. <laughs> Stop. And see, the my biggest issue is, how do you fuck up Star Trek that bad? Half of the Star Trek movies already sucked. How you suck? <laughs> because they clearly were cribbing from the wrong side of the notebook. They went. They looked at, hey, all the next generation movies are basically really dumb, schlocky action movies that don't resemble Star Trek at all. Let's just do that. But with lens flares and time travel, why is no one happy? <laughs> because of the lens flare and time travel. Yes, out. because of the lens flares and time travel. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, you're basically saying that a lot of these Star Trek movies are basically what the Last Jedi was to Star Wars. Mm. No, it depends you? on how you feel about Last Jedi. I'm fifty fifty on it. I thought half of it was like great, and the other half was what the fuck are you doing to Star Wars, guys? <laughs> I enjoyed Last Jedi far more than most people did. I enjoyed it. I loved the parts with Ray, Kylo, Luke and Snoke. I thought those were excellent and honestly Agreed. probably the best stuff I've ever seen in anything Star Wars, period. Loved it. Top to bottom. The well, rest of the movie makes me angry. Not like, <laughs> oh my god, this ruined Star Wars, because I'm not a big Star Wars person, but it was mostly yeah. just a, the fuck are you guys doing? This is dumb. Why are we was, freeing horses on a casino planet, guys? I was, I was, I was gonna say, didn't we go and watch Star Wars together, the last day together? Did or, we? I thought we did. So I think, there, I think Dude, like, I don't remember. I don't even remember either. Oh god, my memory's going in my old age. <laughs> yeah, well. That was my uh, first date. The only there was. Aww. Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, the only other like live action remake that has been done now that I really wish they didn't do was I don't think I'm the minority in this one is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That one I could have done without it. I, I'm not okay, I'm not, not gonna a fan. lie. Not a fan. One thing I enjoyed about it was it was closer to the original book than the first movie ever will be. Right. So it was interesting to get to see that. However, as usual, Tim Burton, you know, and the thing is, I have nothing against Tim Burton, but Tim Burton just, oh, hey, I got to put Johnny Depp in this. Oh, hey. Am I doing the movie? Get me Johnny Depp. It's, oh, not, no. it's not even the Bring darkness me Johnny. at this point. Because the darkness you kind of accept, but it's just, you but have like, to put Johnny Depp in my, every movie. My, my problem with, like, I, I, I love Tim Burton's old stuff. and I love, I love his old stuff, and, for sure. But all, anything that was dark or weird or gothic or creepy or whatever, it had a point and a purpose. Maybe not, like, a deep point or purpose, but there was a reason it was happening. After a certain point... It stopped having any kind... Anytime he does it in a movie, it stopped, it stopped having a meaning in the movie, and it's just... It, that he's just ca- trying to be dark. He's just trying to be dark and weird for the sake of it. And, like, that movie, like... It was kind of ugly to look at. Like, a lot of people I remember saying, Oh, but, like, he uses a lot of practical effects. That's not what I'm talking about. I mean, like, it was just unpleasant to watch. Whereas in the original... Visually. The original with Gene Wilder does a great job, you know, using the colors and using a lot of. Also, Gene Wa- also Gene Wilder's rendition is the original Gene internet Wilder. troll. Gene Wilder will always be Willy Wonka for me, mm-hmm. like beginning and ending of story. There is no other Willy Wonka, Gene yeah. Wilder. Yep, oh, I fully totally agree no. with that because he always, he always had like this deal where he could be kind of kiddish but also be adultish. He kind of you know he had a plan, but it seemed like he was always winging it. And it just he was to... creepy as fuck sometimes. The tension's unbearable. Help it alas. Dude, there are children dying. Do you get... What, what the... Mr. Wonka, please. <laughs> or Tone it Somebody call the police. Help. Help. Please. Help. 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 Please. No, Murder. stop. Come back. Come back. <laughs> it's always... Or let's talk about the scene where they go through that tunnel. You I'm really the only one who was never freaked out. Is that, 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 is that's not what I mean. What I mean is... The reactions of everyone on that boat were genuine. They didn't tell them what they were about to go through. Right. They didn't tell them what was about to happen. The freaked out looks on their faces. The only one who knew what was going to happen was Gene Wilder. 
Hence, which makes Hence sense. why he was calm through the entire thing and just did his part. They wanted that genuine reaction. And sometimes, you know what? I miss that. I miss directors who don't tell them exactly what's about to happen because they want that shock. Well, they, well, they did. I think they did that with uh, with it, where they did, had uh, Bill Skarsgård, you know, hidden away. Yeah. Until like the very first scene where with Georgie, where he just pops up. That way, you got that genuine like you know, shock of fuck. Yeah, it's Penny Lyson. Awesome. Oh, so it's Clown on the Storm Drain. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I, tr- I trust this guy to give me back my boat. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, but uh, like you guys were saying, Tim Burton, you know, great actor. He was one of the reasons why a lot of people really started getting into Batman and also because Michael Keaton is absolutely amazing. Mm, sorry. Michael Keaton is Batman. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I want to see Michael Keaton. I want to see them do a Batman Beyond movie. For the TV show, and I want Michael Keaton to be Batman. Who plays Terry? That's the question I keep getting yeah, asked. I don't know, but I want Michael friend. Keaton. Then you got his friend, what's her name? Uh, his friend Max, his girlfriend. I'm who's... sure they could find some good young yeah. actresses and actors I know, to be just... in it. But I'm tell me, but tell me, you wouldn't love to see Michael Keaton, Keaton as Batman in that training the young new Batman. Like, man, these Jokers are really annoying, Bruce. You don't know shit about the Joker. Yep. But what? And he just hits him with his cane. You want to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight, Terry? <laughs> what? <laughs> I am lost. God. I'm sorry. Be lost. My parents are dead. My parents are dead. He just starts screaming. My parents are dead. Just beating Terry. Where is it? Where is Dan? <laughs> Oh my god. Where's my dad? He's in the great Batman. Where's my dad? He's in the great, great. Where's my mom? She's also in the great Batman. It, no, it, ha- it, has, to, it has to be um, my, Michael Caine playing. Michael Caine, pl- 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 playing, playing Alfred, too. Just, I'm oh, sorry. Dead in Batman, I'm, thoroughly convinced that my, I'm thoroughly yeah. convinced that Michael Caine was named because someone said Michael Caine in a thick British accent. Shut <laughs> 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 Michael <laughs> Wow! I'm looking for there's Michael. There's a baby Kane. named Michael Caine. No, you should, no, his name is Michael. No, I'm pretty sure I said it right. He's pale enough. <laughs> wow. All right, I want to bring up one because you know what? This is an old. This is an '80s movie okay. that I was madly in love with. Still am to this day. Called Adventures in Babysitting. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Hilarious. Oh. Hilarious movie. Wonderful '80s movie. Great little movie. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. Do you want to know what Disney just recently did? Maybe. They made a direct-to-TV remake. First off, this is an 80s movie, so the babysitter, she's in her 20s? No, she's... Uh, she's maybe like... No, she's in her 20s. Okay. And her boyfriend blows her off for a date saying, Oh, I'm sick, I can't come, because he's off with another girl. So she goes and she takes this baby. She's sitting job, and the kids end up in, th- the kids end up freaking running off. She has to go after them into a big freaking city. Okay. Oh, she has to go pick up her friend. Mm-hmm. And then her car breaks down. She has all these horrible things happen to her. This is not a Disney movie. Why is Disney remaking this movie? Because, because Disney, Disney probably Ching. bought the rights because Disney, you know, owns everything. Because Disney's, uh, because Disney's, yeah. ba- because Disney's, because Disney's basically a monopoly at this point. By that's basically a monopoly, I mean Disney's a monopoly at this point. Well, let's, let's also face the fact that, you know, despite what a lot of people might say, Disney does try to treat their actors really good. Unlike, say, you know, other studios, Warren Brothers, <laughs> DC Comics. <laughs> okay, let me say one thing when it comes to treating their actors well. They may treat their movie stars well, but those kids on those TV shows, they have screwed a lot of their careers because it's you have to be this wholesome little treat, and if you're not, we're going to fuck you, you little bitches. <laughs> they have destroyed... Demon. They have destroyed kids' careers who have started out on those channels because all of a sudden they said something that Disney didn't agree with, and they said, oh... We owned you, and now you'll never do anything again because you said something against Disney. I love, and don't get me wrong, personally I love Disney. But what they do to the kids on the channel, and how they treat them, not really a fan. 
I really hurt my hand there. <laughs> so let, Got very let's, angry. Let, let, let's go. Let's go from this pain and torture to another pain and torture, and that's the announcements of a lot of movies that they are trying to remake, oh, and we just don't want. I mean, first one right off the bat that I mean, it was like the last thing I saw on the list was oh, Zorro. I love Antonio Banderas is Zorro. It's hard for me to say that he could be anything else besides that. Okay, other than Puss in Boots, let's face it. But then again, you also have to remember the fact that he... He was played, also Desperado. He, he also basically is he, Zorro, he was but the in animation form. That's yeah. basically what Puss in Boots is, and it was absolutely amazing. And a lot of people know Antonio Banderas is Zorro. They're not going to remember him as the dad from Spy Kids. Are you kidding me? I mean, Gregorio Cortez... With the mustache that comes right he up. He was adorable. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I love those movies. Uh, well, like the original three. They were they were corny as hell, but I got to see them when I was a kid. They were coming out when I was a kid, so I still have a bit of a nostalgia love for them. Oh, I don't know. Fair but, enough. yeah, remaking Zorro? Come on. Let's not. Well, I mean... Let's not and say we did move on with our day. Yeah. I mean, there's, like... Almost every iteration of Zorro, from the old black and white show on Di- that Disney made to the old serials in Mexico to the comics, they're all essentially like soft reboots. Like they'll acknowledge stuff, but like they won't like go into into depth. But like, I don't know. I'm just like, as much as I love the, those that stuff from my childhood, I'm like, how much of a market is there really for this? It just, uh, I'm just I, I gotta wonder. Oh, here's one that I think a lot of people might get ticked off about. I I don't want to see this happening. Uh, do you guys remember that uh, biblical movie, The Ten Commandments? Yeah. Well, they might be planning on remaking that one too. Why? Yeah, did Why? It's like one of the most. Okay. It did. It's one of the most. Yeah. What? Yeah. You would know, my cultist friend. Yeah. Well, okay. One remake was Prince of Egypt. I can at least. Right. Prince well, of Egypt no, was, there was. There was another. Prince one. of Egypt was, was great, s- though. I love that the animated movie. Was it? I can't remember. I don't think it was a theatrical one. No, wait, no, no. I am thinking of the one with uh, Christian Bale. Huh. Mm. Christian Bale. Remember that one? It was Gods and Kings. Mm-hmm. It was. It had Christian Bale and George oh. Joel Edgerton. And, oh. Uh, okay. It was. It was like Ridley Scott. Was that any doing good? Like a war movie, except based on Exodus. Was that any good? They couldn't call it. They couldn't call it Ten Commandments though, because they never actually got the commandments. Uh, the climax of the movie was the Red Sea parting. Oh, uh, okay. So the, it might be a continuation after that for no apparent reason whatsoever. Then the fact weird. That they needed money apparently. How about how about no? They could they could make another Ten Commandments remake. I don't know why. Oh jeez. Tell me that they're not they're not going to make a remake of Stuart Little because those movies were actually pretty good. They were fine the way they were. I don't and, think I ever saw uh, and, the second one. And honestly, there only needed to be one. I think people for so, second one is kind of a take it or leave it kind of. Yeah, thing. I mean, it features you know um, James Woods. Uh, it it oh, wasn't she, bad. Oh, she, what, what, what was her name? Uh, Lily, Lily something. Or anything. It's not helpful. Um, she plays very, but she plays a lot of. No, Je- Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. That's right. Ah, uh, yes. Jennifer Tilly is awesome, though. She is, she really is. She's one of the reasons why I think Chucky's probably watchable. <laughs> oh, God, dude, the, that bit in um, Cult of Chucky. You know, you look just like Jennifer Tilly. Yeah, I hear that all the time. <laughs> I fucking love you. You and, you and I, I, I only got through the seat of Chucky. Yeah. I'm behind need, on a couple movies. We need to fix that. Curse and Cult are, like, genuinely Because good. Chucky is my jam. Curse and Cult, you are... <laughs> so, 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 get, so getting back to that, that yeah, the, the Stuart Little two. It was one of those movies where I was like, yeah, I, it was I, okay. I, I, I could take it or leave it. Again, James Woods, Jennifer Tilly, a couple other things, you know, with Stuart. It, it, I don't know. It really just didn't embody, you know, what the original Stuart Little, Little was. I mean, basically, he's trying to be. He's a little mouse trying to be in a big world and trying to make a big difference, and then in the end, he does. One of those really bizarre really stories, but I, I don't know. I just really yeah. didn't. Very too much, and also let's face it, that nobody's going to play Snowball the Cat better than John John Bennett, God rest his soul. Let's face it, just no one is going to play that role better. So agree. By the way, um, everybody keeps telling me it's dead, yet I keep seeing it everywhere. Everybody said it was dead because Jason Momoa is no longer going to be in it, but I still keep seeing them trying to find a new star. If they remake The Crow, I'm going to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, it's not acceptable. 
Brandon Lee literally died, died for that shit during that movie. You're not going to do any better. Fuck off. Yeah, just. I, I mean, the only thing I could really think of is in the comics, there were multiple. They have multiple movies of the Crow. That's the thing. There's like three or four Crow movies. Yeah, I know. Let's They're not talk about those. But that's my point. Multiple people can be the Crow. I get it. But let's be done. They've oh, done yeah. like four of them now. Oh, yeah. I've seen all of them. Every one of them is terrible except the original movie. I know. I'm like, I guess that'd be my only thing is like, you'd have to do something really different with it. Really different and actually good? I mean, I don't know what you would do. Like, I heard a couple of people say, well, why don't they, you know, set it somewhere other than the U.S.? I'm like, that doesn't change enough. What if, you know, the person who becomes the crow is a woman? That still doesn't change enough. Has happened. Enough. Really? I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, like they, 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 it's already been done, too. So it's like, what What are you going to add to this shit? Let's see here. Oh, hey, they want to try and remake a new Grudge movie, which, let's Can face it. Can we not? Why? There's no, there's no reason to. The original was already scary enough. Can we just not? Let's just... Also, again, well, remakes of remakes, movie. because The Grudge is a remake of a Japanese film. Why do we keep remaking things that have already been remade? Okay, sorry. There are three of them. They were all cycles. dudes, but still. Cycles. <laughs> 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 well, there's four. Cole yeah. might have been a girl in the comics at some point. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. My point is, is out of the four movies they made, only one of them was truly a man anyway, so close enough. Oh. Oh, snap. Didn't you guys have, like, an issue with uh, Highlander possibly being a remake? I have an issue with it. I don't. On, on, on the one hand, that series has been kicked around so... Have you seen the original Highlander movie? Well, I just... Have I... you seen... Answer the question before you continue. <laughs> you know, she's got a point there. If you say no to this, I'm going to have to throw, throw you out that window. I'm just saying... The John Wick oh, director dude, is working on it. Which is fine. I'm not but hearing a yes. Oh, oh, stop. <laughs> no. I, I want you to stop it. I want you to answer the question first. I've seen the show. Okay. That is acceptable because the show is good too. However, have you seen the first movie? You should. I don't like this question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> now it's not that I have an issue with it, it's just all of the movies after one were terrible. Oh, yeah. The only good thing they managed to do was the show, and they only were able to make the show work by basically saying, hey, so the last 20 minutes of the first movie didn't happen, and we're going to focus on his cousin. Yeah. However, I really, really enjoyed Christopher Lambert as the Highlander. I will always still laugh about the fact, though, that the Frenchman played the Scotsman and the Scotsman played the Egyptian. Yeah. Just, just putting that one it's, out there. <laughs> like it's, that. It's, it's a strange world we live in. You s- Spanish peacock. I'm not Spanish, I'm Egyptian. You are neither of those things, <laughs> sir. Why so, do I know this little bastard... I know he's somewhere <laughs> other than the crow. So, oh, Edward Furlow, he's the um, John Connor in T- Terminator 2. Oh, that's where yeah, I know him the, from. He, yeah, By the, the way, he was in the fourth crow movie as the crow character. So again, see see right there. Right there. We already had a girl. We're good. The only good <laughs> thing about that movie was David Bornes being the fucking devil. You know, yeah. I'm super down with that. It was pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. speaking of David Boreanaz, they want to remake Buffy. I don't. Uh, no, no, why? Not, no, no, no. They're not no, remaking. They're not remaking it. They're doing a basically like a continuation, from what I understand. But it's going to follow a different Slayer. Yes, oh. that is what I have heard as well. You just bought yourself a date, my friend. <laughs> However, <laughs> oh, bringing goodness. that up so much about how I didn't want them to remake Buffy. Yeah. That's why I responded as quickly as I did. This is You're welcome. Reasons. This is one of the reasons why I love this podcast, because we got violent people here that are literally ready to just pull the trigger at any moment. Uh, yeah. I, the first thing on this list that I saw that I definitely did not agree with was they want to remake Ace Ventura without Jim Carrey, which is stupid Okay, he was Ace Ventura, though. He was. I mean, you looked at everything I'm, that he did 
Uh, he even talked about you know some of the, the things second one did, was like, the only good one anyway. Well, like a lot of his like movements and his hairstyle it came from birds. He watched a lot of birds and he was saying like, okay, I need to mimic that if I'm going to do this, and it worked for him. It made him look like a legitimate funny guy, but at the same time, it looked like he was a guy who was just walking with purpose. He was walking with confidence. It's absolutely amazing. He's a Agent Cooper's peacock. got a stupid question or a stupid comment to make. Please. So, um, I didn't even as a kid like either of those movies. And that's fine. If you either like them or you don't. It's one like I said, I only like the second one anyway. Like the first one, I watched it through the first time as a kid and I was like, eh, that's kind of funny. Second one, I thought it was hilarious. Otherwise, I'm just like, yeah, we... And now as adults, I'm just like, I, I could live with with or without them, but let's not redo them either. Yeah, that's just no. Also, it, I, I'd like to add in another uh, possible remake: Escape from New York. Okay, so we already did a sequel and it failed because that is a one-time premise, and the only way I could see that working is you would ha- like the first movie was all about like a lot of this the fears of like you know what's going on in the big cities back in the eighties. That doesn't really apply anymore, so the only way I could see a remake of that working wouldn't be Escape from New York. It, this is going to sound like I'm making a joke, but it would be Escape from America. I could see Up that. the ante to that point. Hmm. My other thing with that, though, is Kurt Russell was perfect for that role. Oh, he was an amazing snake plus Who are you going to get to replace him? Because I'm sorry, there's not a man today who can embody... What Kurt Russell has, in my opinion. Well, yeah, I agree. I, with I, that. I was about to say, was that really even a question that needed to be asked? There's no one, like you said. Uh. It's the reason he was the perfect choice for Guardians of the Galaxy 2 to play Ego. When they chose him for that, I was like, I could see that. And then the movie came out, I was like, God, he's so perfect. <laughs> he's also oh, become the silveriest of silver foxes. <laughs> And I'm just saying, and also, and still he's now the right. In love with Miss Goldie Hawn. And at this point, he's now the right age to play the character. Just make Metal Gear Solid Three into a movie. It's the only one of those games I thought was any good. And it's a prequel, so you don't need to like do anything with the rest of them. Just do Metal Gear Solid Three Snakey. Just call you have something to say about Metal Gear Solid, Mister? I like those games. Oh. I was just gonna say the first one is really, really good. I only one I could get into is the third one. I really uh, like no, the third it, one. It, you, you, it, you can talk all you want about the second one, and the fourth one, and the story of the fifth one. And <laughs> the story of the... I, I won't play the fifth one just because of what Great, Konami did. Great, the snake did. voice. No, what Konami did to Kojima. Snake voice. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't like a snake voice. Uh, I love it. Uh, <laughs> no. Metal Gear. No, but tell me, he would, tell me he wouldn't make a great big boss, though. He could. Especially the older the ca- Big Boss got. Like, I, I think it would work. It would work better than, you know, another Assassin's Creed movie because they're making another Assassin's Creed movie. Why? Ah! <laughs> All right. Well, Let's talk about... We're, we're, we're on remakes, not Sorry, sequels. sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Go ahead. I will, I, will, I will say this, that, you know, <laughs> you, you, you bring it up, but one, honestly, one of the things that we said was that we enjoyed the actual sequences where they were actually doing, you know, the... The actual Assassin's Creed deal where they were oh, actually. Oh, yeah, like the bits in the past were fine. But then when they reached the, you know. The modern the, stuff, it was painful. Yeah, that's where it was just like, just please, just no. Hey, speaking of remakes, no remake Assassin's Creed. No. <laughs> <laughs> mm, oh. Michael Fassbender. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll, f- we'll find out what this is. Michael Fassbender? Anyway. Well, I got a boner. So, <laughs> Go ahead with your next one. God God help me. I think that they are going to probably try to remake, you know, a lot of the horror movies. I mean, we've seen them do that with Halloween. A lot of them, a lot of horror movie remakes have been good. Like, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one in 2003, Dawn of the Dead in 2004, The Wolfman in 2009, The Crazies in 2009, 1990, uh, Night of the Living Dead. Most of the old classic uh, Hammer Studios movies that a lot of old school fans love or remakes of Universal movies. By the time Universal did their own version of Frankenstein, I mean, it was not just an, a very loose adaptation of Mary Shelley's book, but it was also a remake of one of the first movies ever made, Thomas Edison's Frankenstein. So. Oh, I just thought of one. But, like, that American Werewolf in, in London remake, kind of that's literally the first horror movie I ever watched. It's also the first horror comedy I ever watched, and subsequently the first thing I ever saw with werewolves, one of, you know, the type of monsters that I liked the most. 
don't do this. Don't do this to me. I d- don't. You know what? <laughs> the thing of the, Top, the, no, the director of that movie, um, uh, not Max Landis. Max Landis is his son. I John. John Landis. Yeah, John Landis has gone through some crap, mostly because his son has been accused of doing some pretty, pretty bad shit. So he doesn't need his legacy dragged through the mud uh, and as well. Leave the movie alone. Don't do it. Hands. We already they already tried making a sequel to that movie 15 years after it came out in 1996 American World from Paris and pretty sure that was the cinematic equivalent of watching your child die in a blender <laughs> in a blender specific? You heard me baby's movie Ew. I mean I'll, I mean also I was going to mention you know three movies that come to my head when I think of horror that did not need a remake was Nightmare on Elm Street That was one Jigsaw and uh, Friday the 13th. The only thing that people will say that was really good about Friday the 13th is that, hey, at least at this Friday the 13th, we get to see Jason instead of Jason's mom in the first movie instead of seeing a rotting corpse. I liked the 2009 remake. Well, your opinion is irrelevant in this case. (laughs) But I I do. He's not a runner. He's just a guy who just somehow magically appears out of nowhere. He friggin' ran in a couple of the old movies, like in the early ones. And And all the ones I've seen have had him just like pacing, but never running. He somehow just made it. It happens a couple. I I don't know. I liked it because the characters actually seem to genuinely give a crap about each other. And Jason, they went, all right, instead of making him like a mentally damaged, like rando killer in the woods will make him like this super brutal hardcore survivalist killer i'm like well that could be you know scary or not scary and it's like oh this actually works it's kind of brutal it's kind of unnerving oh hey one of the main characters is sam from supernatural never mind i like this movie sam versus it's <laughs> sam versus for, for jason Voorhees. why what what am i what am i complaining about well there's I think we just had our answer right there as to why he likes the movie, and it's mainly because it's mainly because of fucking Jared pop, Padalecki. It was pop culture was incorporated. Ja- Jared, so Jared Padalecki, leave me alone, man. I I wish I could, I but I have to. I, I have to live with you for the rest of my life. So just I I would like to talk about the fact that they they want to make they want to remake a cult classic, a cult classic called Heavy Metal. Yeah, that's not acceptable. That's not okay. I don't like this. Kill their children. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> Brutal. You could say it's pretty it. metal. It is super metal. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. We could melt them with a green orb. <laughs> It'd be just like the movie. Mm-hmm. We'll have to have just as many... We'll have we to need have uranium. Just, we need uranium. We need drugs. So many drugs and naked people. Yes. But seriously, the other thing is, is just what... I don't think what Hollywood doesn't understand is this movie was a product of its time. This was one of those movies that will always be dated because of it being a product of its time. This is not something that I feel sh- should be remade. They tried to do Heavy Metal 2000, where they... It, heavy Metal 2000 is like... T- the difference between he- Heavy Metal and Heavy Metal 2000 is the difference between Fantasia and Fantasia 2000. Oh, boy. They literally watered it down, added songs that weren't as good... Well, that's because the Indip- soundtrack was mostly new metal, and I shit you not, an ICP song. Yes, I am aware. <laughs> which like is why this kid and ICP. What which are we is doing why in it's lives? <laughs> horrible. Which is why that right there tells me you guys can't handle. I don't care who it is. You can't handle remaking this movie. Also, you're gonna you're gonna lose so much when you remake this movie because let's talk about the fact that. The late, great John Candy was a big part of this movie. Oh, yeah. Didn't he play one of the coked-up aliens? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thought so. Well, I mean, not only that, but, like, it was, like, yeah, the movie came out in the early 80s, and it was more or less based off of the metal scene. It was also based off a comic book. Oh, yeah. Comic, the the heavy metal magazine, which is, you know, a bunch of fantasy and art and shit. It was based off a combination of that and the late 70s metal scene. As bad as it was, Heavy Metal 2000 was based on a lot of the same stuff, but from the year 2000, and of course the music scene from the year 2000. Metal, like, as a big fan of the genre of music metal, metal is, the metal scene is very different in 2018, and it's not. not, It was. Yeah, and a lot of changes. Oh, yeah, and a lot of the changes are for the better, I feel. It's a much more, you know, open, inclusive. Music has to evolve. Yeah, it, it feels, every concert feels like a goddamn music festival from what I've been told. But the problem is, 
it doesn't lend itself well to a fantasy, sci-fi, zany, crazy, blood and tits epic anymore. No. It's not 70s metal. It's not even early 80s metal anymore. It's 2018 metal, and while the music's great, you're not going to make a movie out of it. Notice yeah, I said plot, not, because uh, heavy metal didn't have much of a plot. Well, you're not going to make a... You're not going to make a fantasy. No. Not a sci-fi fantasy. Because basically what this movie to me was a sci-fi fucking fantasy uh, rock opera, basically. Yeah, it didn't really need to have a story. That wasn't the point. Oh, God, you know... Well, they're, they're going to make they're gonna make stories anyway. They're going to make it have one long, coherent narrative and miss the point. Oh, God, I'm going to kill myself. It's going to be boring. It's going to be super boring. And it's going to be... Oh, oh God, they're going to base it around scene metal and I'm going to want to kill myself. So I'm ba- guy. So, so, so basically, yeah, these are movies that we wish did not be remade. We or don't we don't see. want them to be remade. The point is that... It's Show really, some goddamn originality. That's the, that is it. That's really it. Like, remakes are fine. Tone it down a bit. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if they created new, new stuff, like, you know, A Quiet Place, that was one of the best movies God, of that was this. So good. And one of the best movies of the year. And it's an original concept that a comedian came up with on the top of his head. I mean, Get Out was another good one. Yeah. Get Out, Quiet Place. Get Out was so good. Oh, my God, right? No, but Get Out, Quiet Place, um, even though it uses the toys, it's not technically based on anything. The Lego movie. That was fun. Um, there's, like, a lot of the well, really big... movies were great. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, that one's at least based on the Batman character. Like, this was literally Batman. just... Like, the Lego Batman movie was, hey, let's That was so a, much fun, though. Oh, God, though. It, but it was basically... It was, let's make a comedy about Batman using Legos. The Lego movie was... You know those brick films people used to upload onto YouTube back in 2006? Let's make a movie. Except with budget. Well, what's the story based on? We're just going to make our own story. Why have we got to base it on something? It's using Legos. Eight billion children will see it. <laughs> but, no, like... Those know that there would be, like, you know... Almost 10 trillion people oh, you know, and I I love the idea of making more original movies but also if you want to do remakes as much as I'm not happy about the idea of the making remaking Drop Dead Fred it was a movie that a lot of people haven't seen I say that name and most people look at me blankly because they have no idea what that movie is I mean hell I only know about it so, because of a YouTube video <laughs> so you know what fine I can see why they'd want to remake it I'm not Again, so I'm not necessarily thrilled about it because it was my childhood, mm-hmm. but oh I could see remaking something like that. Take these movies that were old movies that nobody remembers or that didn't do well. Or were bad. Or that were bad, yeah, and remake them and make them good. Like, uh, like If you want to do a remake, then do it. Like a lot of But people, do it on something that wasn't really It didn't good. have its moment. Yeah. Like, I mean, I heard a bunch of people saying that. Rain oh, fire. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good example. Yeah. Rain of fucking fire. Can you imagine Military a good version of that? Versus dragons. Well, that's like, a movie. That well, hey, how about this one? A lot of people. There's a couple studios that've been I trying agree. to buy the rights to, and I know people laugh, but they want to buy the rights to Battlefield Earth. Use the base premise of the novel as a structure and just expand and do kind of their own I thing. I would be cool with that. Yeah. Yes. Because, like, the idea of telling a story about an Earth after the aliens have successfully conquered, we know why they're here, they're just better and smarter than us, and it's been so long that we can't remember anything, that's actually kind of interesting. That's it's good. just the movie and the book it's based on were really, really bad, so just, you know, cut out a lot of things and put in some new shit. Like, that would be fine. Or... Like, just anything that didn't get its moment. Don't fucking remake something that's, like, a beloved, time-honored classic. Also, Disney, I love you, but stop making, like, stop doing the, li- Not the live action movies of the movies that you literally made, like, 20 years ago. They're not even, yeah. like, 30, 40 years ago anymore. Yeah. 20 years ago. Well, Beauty and the Beast was fine. Mm. I enjoyed it for what it was. I can get that. I don't want to see Lion King. I don't want to see it at all. Well, can we also and, talk about the fact that... And the reason is, is because it's not live action, first yeah, off. Yeah, thank you. It's That's a so... CGI movie. Lions can't talk. That's why it was an animated movie. Come on. Also, let's talk about the fact that you are... You're... I was really excited for the idea of the live action Mulan movie. And everybody was all upset. Oh, they're not going to do the songs. That's fine. They're actually going to follow the story of the real person... 
Who is Mulan? Except not anymore because they're incorporating except, a bunch of the songs. Except not anymore because they're incorporating the songs and they're bringing Mushu back into it. And I'm just like, come on! You really had finally had me at the point of, dude, I'm going to get a Mulan movie that's based off of the person who you decided to make a movie about in the first place. This is a real person. Yeah. This is, Fa Mulan existed. And it's like, oh, cool, we're actually going to... I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Original Mulan movie by Disney was great. Loved it. It's a, it's a lot great, of fun. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot of fun Disney movie. But it also... A lot of people have complained in the past, like, a lot of movies that Disney made back in the day that were, like, oh, they're set in China or set in this country or set in this culture. They kind of didn't feel like it. Like, that did not feel Chinese. I was kind of interested in seeing, like, what a Chinese-feeling Mulan movie would be, and it's like, but we're no, we're just going to bring back the songs and the dragon, and I'm just like... Except the next person who tells me that the animated movie was whitewash can lick my balls. Oh, that's not what I was talking about. I was talking oh, about I'm the not talking. I know, I'm not talking about you. I've had a lot of people tell me it was whitewash, and I'm like, have you watched Kubo and the Two Strings, which is about a small Japanese boy, and the fact that there are two... Asian men in the story, two Asian actors in the entire movie, and neither one of them were even in a slightly important role. Yeah, George the rest of them were white as fuck, and do you hear anybody complaining about Kubo and the Two Strings? No. Did you know that Mulan, most of the cast is actually Asian? So, sure. lick my nuts. Pretty much. Yeah. And you're going to have to open my stomach to do it, because guess what? Mine are on the inside. <laughs> very interesting, very interesting. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Well, we were talking about movies that we want. Yeah, we're moving right along. Yeah. yeah. Like, Rain of Fire. No. <laughs> or no, a Netflix I'm... series based on Daybreakers. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap it up, because myself and Max, we got to get back to watch Hell in a Cell this... I swear to God, if that sucks. <laughs> if, if the Predator winds up being the good thing I see today. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll see, you'll see more good things today. But before we do a go, like I said, we're going to do just at least two more rounds of <laughs> Mr. Agent Cooper's favorite thing, and that is indeed anti-jokes. I'm going to go outside and uh, <laughs> use my e-cig, guys. Let me know. <laughs> but, we but we're doing it reason. for you. We're doing but it we're doing it for but you. we're doing it for you. Yeah, and Jason Voorhees, when he kills people, it's for his mommy. What do you want? Hey, Cooper, what's green and has wheels? Grass. I lied about the wheels. <laughs> ah. we, we, we got time. We could do a couple, couple more. So, <laughs> so all of you. Oh, no, it just gets better. It just gets better. I, I went to, like, the very bottom since we already gets, went through the first. I don't think this gets better. I think this gets infinitely. No, trust me, there are a couple in there that are really dark, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to save it for you guys because it just... <laughs> dark. How about this one? A midget goes up to a prostitute and asks, what's the worst joke you've ever heard? She replied, probably this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I actually have one. It's not going to be... It might be on there, but I actually thought of one. Okay. It's one that a member of my family told me. So this uh, tax attorney... He goes in to uh, speak with his client because she's filing her taxes. And he finds out over the process going everything over everything that she happens to be a prostitute. And he, so, you know, they go through everything and finally says, all right, look, I have no problems with your, your profession. I don't even think it should be illegal or anything like that, but I can't put that down on tax forms. They go to the government, you'll get arrested, I'll get arrested. So what do I do? So she thinks for a little bit and says, I've got it. I know what you can put my job down as. What? Chicken farmer. A chicken farmer? Why would I call you a chicken farmer? Because I've done raised about a hundred of those little peckers. <laughs> oh, that's good. But don't tish. Got my own Did you have one Gert? <laughs> Gert? I thought it was Gert. It's Gert. It is Gert. That's why I said Gert. Oh. He said Gert. I am Gert. <laughs> I am Gert. <laughs> you didn't think of that? No. It is a brain beats. Well, in this case, we're going to probably only finish off with this joke, so. Good, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good one. Okay. Uh, why can't Michael J. Fox draw a perfect circle? Because uh... drawing a perfect circle is impossible for any human. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I thought we were about to have a Parkinson's <laughs> joke. Why, why God. does Michael J. Fox make the best milkshakes? Because, because he uses the very best and finest ingredients. Yeah, right. I heard that. Oh I heard that. God. I use Tracy Scatterbot. Give the pencil to Michael J. Fox. Ah! Oh, I, that's not mine. I did make it up. That is from a song. 
I'm sure you did. All like right, so this has phone. been our episode of remakes that we don't want, that we didn't want, and also a lot of really bad anti jokes. So for Gert, Carissa, also the predator sucks. <laughs> And AJ Cooper, who is going to be using the hashtag the Predator sucks throughout all of his tweets. All tonight. of my tweets for Homicell would be hashtag Homicell 20. There's probably going to be. Spoiler alert, the Predator sucked. <laughs> yes, I needed that entire other hashtag. <laughs> You're just going to run out of characters. I've been, I've been Nate the Epic Great. Characters. This has been the, the Game hashtag. Changer. Pa- Thank you guys so much. And be sure to tune in later tonight when we do the Hell in the Cell uh, post show. Have a good one and good night. It's not hashtag.